Hi, my name's Brett. We live in a very sun-exposed area off-grid in Utah and have the need for a cooling system that runs on 12 volt. I'm going to run you through the swamp cooler that I built for my 30-foot yurt last year. I'll run you through the finished product and I am currently building a new swamp cooler for my tiny house my on wheels. swamp cooler that I built for my 30-foot yurt last year. It runs a computer cooling pump and a car radiator fan. So I have hardwired it in. I have switches to turn the fan and the pump on and off. The fan draws seven and a half amps, 90 watts at 12 volt, and the pump draws one third of an amp. This is my first attempt at an online instructional video, so please bear with me. The unit you see here does not have its own reservoir built into the unit as it's installed into the wall of my yurt. If we look down here, we can see a Rubbermaid bin full of water. You can see my pumps running and the water supply return coming from the unit uh, helps the unit from not getting, from not overflowing. So let's go back up here and we can turn this fan back on and see how the unit runs. This keeps my 30 foot yurt about 15 degrees cooler inside than, what, than it does outside when the air is dry. I recommend anytime you're going to start a project like this to do at least a rudimentary sketch so that you can come up with the sizes that you need that are going to fit your application. Everything I've done on my tiny house on wheels has been a custom build and it's been a big learning experience. So I did already start my box for my cooler for the tiny house. So we can see that I've got the box set up, set up here. I've got the main part of the box built and the cutout in the back for my cooler pad and the air intake done. When building this box, I normally would have used an air compressor and a staple gun to get everything assembled. Right now my large generator is broken so I can't run my air compressor. So when I constructed this box, I opted just for wire brads to hold it together, knowing that the fiberglass that I fiberglassed the inside of this box with was going to add the structure for the box. So I did coat the inside with fiberglass resin, and on the corners I used resin with no hardener in it and went ahead and put my wire my cloth down so I have fiberglass cloth into the corners you can kind of see the cloth here and then I went went ahead and coated the whole thing with fiberglass resin with hardener mixed into it so this made a really nice strong box and then that fiberglass resin was going to waterproof the inside of the box to where it will hold water there are plenty of resources out there on how to do fiberglass, so I'm not going to get too deep into that. So as we've seen, I've got this portion of my box built. So now moving over, we're going to go ahead and start on building the portion of the box that's actually going to come through the window, since I do have regular double pane, double hung windows installed in my tiny house. So I built the front of the box that will go through the window. As you can see, there are two compartments on it. The lower compartment, I've cut a hole into the main chamber. The upper compartment is where all of my electronics and wiring will be. As you can see, I've used two by fours for the construction. And the reason I used two by fours was because that, that piece will hold a lot of the weight once it's mounted. I now have several coats of fiberglass resin on this cooler box. I did do some cloth tape around the edges just for a better seal. And I've now cut out the opening that's going to be inside the, the house. And so I've cut it out just a little bit wider than the protrusion on the box here on all directions so that it sits in, into the window really nicely. And then I have marked on the back of my box, you can see the marks that I've made here. I've marked the opening. And now I'll go ahead and start placing my fans and get the cutouts for the fans taken care of. Clean up. But you can see here's my front panel that's going to install here on the inside of the house. And I have gone ahead and done a couple coats of fiberglass resin on the front panel. So meanwhile, you can see this quarter inch wire mesh that I've got out on the table here, and you can see the shape that I've shaped this mesh into. And I have actually gone ahead and already installed some wire mesh on the inside of my cooler. 
and I installed it in a configuration where it's going to hold the cooler pads against the back side of the opening. So I've gone ahead and laid out some of my electronics and plumbing that I'm going to need to start making this thing come alive. So you can see this fan here. This fan I bought off of Amazon. It's four and three quarters inches and it will move 200 cu cubic feet per minute. And that's a lot of air for three pans I'm going to install in this unit. So I went ahead and purchased a fan speed controller off of Amazon as well. So, and installing this speed controller will allow me to control the speed of my fans with a dial. I've got my two switches. One will be for the pump, one will be for the operation of the fans. My wire that I'm going to use to plug it in with the plug. And then I've used a three quarter inch piece of PVC with a couple fittings uh, that I will drill a series of holes in to drip water into my cooler pads. So, I could not find a fitting that would go into this PVC that also the other end of the hose would fit my pump. So I went with a 5 16th inside diameter hose and that will fit my pump snugly and the 7 16th outside diameter will fit really snugly into this other half inch outside diameter pipe. So I'll use a series of pipes to get it up to where I can match this fitting to my pump's fitting and supply water to the cooler. As you can see, this looks like a little bit of a mess. Sometimes these things tend to be. So you can see right here, this comes from inside the cabin and this is my main power supply. So this is my positive line that comes out to each one of my switches. So this is the switch for the pump. So this goes out to my pump. So this is my power supply that comes down to my fan controller and then I have the motor side from my fan controller coming up and attaching to my fans here. So the, the white wire here is the negative coming from my pump. As you can see the rheostat dial from my fan controller, this plugs into the fan controller module and I had to route out a recess for this because the plywood was a little bit too thick. So I'm now going to go ahead and flip this over and install it. And when I put this on, I'm just going to run a bead of silicone around the front side and use some regular wood screws because I want to be able to take this off in case something, one of the fans stops working later. So I did leave the grabber screws that I installed the front with exposed. Uh, I may paint this, but I think we prefer the rustic look, so I'm probably going to leave it just like this. Next step is going to be to take some of my quarter inch mesh that I used it on the inside and install it over the fans so that a finger or any drapes that end up hanging down on accident don't get sucked into the fan and damage the blades. So the next piece, I've installed a half inch line that will be the drain returning water from my cooler back to the main water reservoir outside. I will drill another hole up higher that'll be my water supply for the cooler pads. You can see this wire coming out the side here. This wire is going to power the pump from the pump switch that we saw before. So this will be my manifold that will supply water to my cooler pads. So it's a three quarter inch piece of PVC on the bottom end has holes drilled approximately every inch and I use the 3 30 seconds drill bit to put those holes in. So I've got a T that's a half inch reducer and then this elbow has a threaded end that goes to the correct size fitting for my pipe that will be inside. So I installed the manifold that we talked about earlier and you can see the supply line coming up through the wall and it goes up and hooks into that manifold. So the wires I have now hooked up to my pump. I'm filling up my 50 gallon barrel of water that's going to be my supply and I have my water return 
that I'll throw in the hole on this 50 gallon barrel. And now I think it's time before I put the cooler pads in just to test everything out to see if everything works. This is the view from inside the house. You can see that the window holds the unit nicely. Uh, however, I will still install the anchor chains on the outside just to help hold the weight so the window doesn't have to do all the work. You can see the wire mesh that I've installed so nothing gets into those fan blades. And the wire that is the power supply comes out is routed under, underneath my wood stove and over to a plug here in the corner. So let's go ahead and turn this on and let's see if it works. So I'm going to turn the switch for the fans on and we'll turn up the dial to see that the fans actually work. Now we'll go ahead and turn the pump switch on. And if you can see through the fans here, I do have water dripping down behind those fans. You can hear it. And here you can see that water dripping. So my pump is working. My fans are working. Before I install my cooler pads, I just wanted to give you a view of the water coming out of my manifold that I've installed. It is making a little bit of a mess but once I get the pads installed. So it should help clean that up quite a bit. And then we'll give this thing a real good test run. So I've got my cooler pads installed. Here in a second we'll take a walk outside and show you the outside view before I put the grill on. But a little bit of a disclaimer. The fans that I installed uh, were blowing to the outside, not the inside, because I didn't check the polarity or the direction of flow for these fans. So I thought I was going to be tricky, and I just reversed the polarity coming off of the fan control module, and apparently these fans all have diodes installed in them where they will only blow one direction, so I had to take the whole front off and turn the fans around. But now everything's working good. The air coming out of here is nice and cool. And uh, we'll go take a walk outside. So here's the outside view with the cooler pads installed. I use a synthetic cooler pad. I still need to install the anchor chains, but for now I put a spacer underneath the bottom of the unit in between the wall and the cooler uh, to make it sit nice and flat. Uh, so the tube with the wire wrapped around it you can see here is the supply tube coming up from the pump that's in my 50 gallon drum and you can see this bottom line here is returning water back to that drum that ends up in the bottom of my tank so this thing's working pretty well uh, the last couple little steps are to install a grill on the outside to protect it from wind and dirt and to install the spacers around the outside to the window here you can see a view with the grill installed. I actually cut the opening originally just to fit this grill. So everything as far as sizes seemed to work out for my application. I've done a temporary seal around the edges that'll get me through until tomorrow. So for now, let's go ahead and check the power use of this cooler. So right now, cooler's running. And I am using 4.9 amps. So let's go ahead and turn the cooler off and see what the difference is in the amps that are being drawn from my batteries. Looks like my monitor leveled out at 1.6. So I'm running roughly three and a half amps with this unit when it's on full blast. So that shouldn't be too big of a draw for my batteries. This type of construction should work for anyone who's looking to build an evaporative cooler. For a camper running off of batteries, a tiny house running off-grid off of solar panels and 12-volt batteries, or a yurt with 12-volt solar panel like we've seen previously in my video. I've received a lot of help in the past from people posting videos on YouTube showing how they've built things. Everything in the tiny house that I've built has been a custom build and I've leaned on this resource a lot. Hopefully this helps somebody out there. Thank you.